art nerds, today we're taking a look at the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolors. Keep watching if you want to find out how these perform. So today we're going to be taking a look at the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolors. These are made ba -da -da -dun -dun -dun, by Nevskaya Palitra. And these are not the same as the Yarka St. Petersburg watercolors. I do have the Yarka St. Petersburg watercolors. They were one of my first watercolor sets as a professional artist. So if you guys are interested in seeing how those shake out or seeing how they compare to this set, let me know in the comments below. So these retail for $31.38 through Amazon and they have whole pans inside. You guys can find all this information as well as links in the description below. These are their fi extra fine artist watercolors. Um, Nevskaya Palita makes like three different layers. There's the White Knights, the Lagoda, and the Sonnet watercolors with the White Knights having the largest range. The White Knights are available in both pan and tube form. There are 66 total colors available in the, the whole pan form, but there's only 12 colors available in the 10 milliliter tubes. And these are 2.5 milliliter whole pans. And pans are available open stock through their website. Again, you guys can check out the description below for all of that information. So this is the plastic set. They come in like four different sets, cardboard, plastic, metal, and wooden sets. And this just came in the other day. And a lot of people have asked me to review this set and I've kind of held off because reviewing these sort of watercolors can be kind of pricey, but I'm able to do it with the help of my patrons on Patreon. So this is the plein air set, extra fine artist watercolors, the export series. And I got this through SAA, um, their Amazon shop. And if you guys haven't checked out their YouTube channel, it is a phenomenal watercolor resource that um, has loads of fantastic uh, watercolor tutorials, watercolor demos, product information, and it is the Society for All Artists. Inside this set of White Knights, we get cadmium yellow medium, golden, cadmium red light, carmine, cerulean blue, ultramarine, emerald green, green, raw sienna, burnt sienna, sepia, and Payne's gray. And the light fast information, as well as the opacity, are listed on the back. So try to get it so you guys can see all of it clearly in the shot. You can pause here if there's a color you're interested in. So this is the plastic plain air set. Nice compact set of 12 whole pans. The White Knights Extra Fine Artist Watercolor is manufactured with finely dispersed and light fast pigments. The paint structure also comprises gum arabic. This results in a quality paint, giving artists full assurance when completing important artwork. And these are Russian watercolors. So we've looked at Japanese watercolors, we've looked at Korean watercolors, we've looked at English and American watercolors. Now we're looking at Russian watercolors. So I have a feeling a lot of the information in here, I am not gonna be able to read you guys. So this is our swatch cards. And then here are our full pans and they come in the, this transparent tray. So this is sort of like, wow, that was awesome. Nothing to hold them in place, guys. Not that that is the most important thing in the world, but something important to know, right? When you dump all your watercolors down. Good thing these were wrapped. I'll just figure them out all over again. And I may end up resorting these anyway. Or I could probably just go buy this right here. So for the purposes of our video, I'll just reorganize them the way they were. So this tray is very slippery once it's out. But you can use this tray to kind of reorganize the colors. And this reminds me a lot of the Windsor and Newton system that they had for their Cotman and Professional watercolors for the larger sets where you kind of can snap them in and out of their trays. I think I rehomed that palette because I didn't like it. 
and bought just a normal palette. There's also a space up here for a travel brush. And it looks like it would be large enough for one of the Koi travel brushes. So I'm gonna slip this out again and we're going to start unwrapping. So they're all individually wrapped with the name in three different languages, Russian, English, and German. The size, oh, French, mm, Italian, and Spanish, a barcode, and then a lot of information in Russian that I can't read, unfortunately. So I'll go ahead and unwrap one for you guys on camera. And these are kind of similar to the other St. Petersburg paints in that they have a foil wrapper. It's a lot like gum. And these, oh man, these remind me so much of the other Yarka paints or of the Yarka um, St. Petersburg just because it's like a very soft, smooth, poured sort of watercolor paint. Nothing wrong with that. Viva la regional differences. So the color name is not on the pan at all. Give you guys a close up of the pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use some double stick tape and a pair of scissors. I'm going to cut off the color information and adhere it to the back. And while I work, I'll read you some important information. Well, at least interesting to me. And all this is again, gonna be in the description below. So if you miss something, you can look down there. So it is 3138 for these 12 whole pans. This is the plain air set and it is designed for export. And I ordered this through Amazon through the SAA shop. These are 2.5 milliliter pans. So these are whole pan size. And I have a half pan here just to sort of demonstrate the size difference. So obviously a whole pan is two half pans. This isn't even quite a whole pan and it seems a little bit smaller than the Yarka ones. So I really hope you guys will ask me to do that comparative demonstration so we can take a look at both. This, the wrapper seems to be made of plastic, not wrapped, waxed. So these are their extra fine watercolors, 66 total colors with pigments and life, light fastness ratings available on the site. The pigment is not listed on here and it is listed on the box. So cadmium yellow medium is PY35, golden is PY3, PO13, cadmium red light is PR108, carmine is PR107, and then I'm not super sure what that means there. It's like a ratio maybe. Cerulean blue is PB35. Ultramarine is PB29. Emerald green is PG7. Green is PG8. Raw sienna is PBR7. Burnt sienna is PBR7. Oh, cool. Okay, so it's just different handlings of the same pigment. Um, there is a sticker on my paint spray. Let me see if I can remove that. Sepia is PR102, PR108, and PB, oh, and, and PB Black, or P Black 7. Uh, PR102, PR187, P Black 7. Payne's Gray is P Black 7, PB15, PB7. I mean, PB, wow, cannot talk today. I'm so sorry, guys. P Black 7, PB15, PV3. And all that information is available on their website and you can find a link to that in the description below. So these are available in pans or in 10 milliliter tubes and 10 milliliter is a pretty generous amount. You can get the pans open stock from the St. Petersburg website. Again, check the description below for a link for that. And these come in plastic, cardboard, metal, and wooden sets. And we're looking at one of the plastic sets today. This is the plain air set. 
Again, these are not the same as the Yorka St. Petersburg watercolors. Um, and I had a pretty good clip, a pretty good little bite from Amazon, one of the Amazon reviews. And I'll read it here and you can find a link to the source review down below. These are not the same. The original White Knights are produced by Nevskaya Palitra, manufacturer in St. Petersburg, Russia, for about 100 years. Their paints are the highest quality watercolors available on the market. Other Nevskaya Palitra paints, different quantity of pans in different containers, are also known by names St. Peter, Petersburg, Leningrad, but again, produced by Nevskaya Palitra, not Yarka. From, Larka, from the Yarka listing on Amazon. And I have a link for that in case you guys wanna see the source material. And then white knights are professional watercolors of the highest quality that combine old masters traditions and modern production techniques. The paints are produced the finest of finely ground pigments and binders adding gum Arabic which is recognized as the best natural adhesive for professional watercolors. The colors have high intensity color hues, which do not tone down even when much water is added. This is provided by the high concentration and fine grit of the pigment. The paints have perfect mixing smearing. Sorry, I have to look at what I'm doing. Perfect mixing, smearing, and spreading qualities. The palette consists mostly of mono pigment and light fast colors which is true, only um, like three colors are multiple pigments with that being Payne's Gray, Sepia. Actually, it might be two, I thought it was three. Oh, and Golden. So three are multi-pigment paints, the rest are monopigment paints. And I cannot vouch for this firsthand, but I have been told that monopigment paints are really what you want to aim for because they're the least likely to turn muddy on your painting. The palette consists mostly of mono pigment and light fast colors available in sets of 12, 16, 24, 36, 48 colors in 2.5 milliliter pans, 12 colors in the 10 milliliter tubes and in an assortment of 64 colors in six 2.5 milliliter pans. And that's from their website. And again, you can find all this information and the links down below. So the ones we're testing here are the highest grade available. And I'd actually be kind of interested in testing out their other paints, but if they're too similar to these, there's not really any point to that. These are the ones that seem to be more common in the US, more available in the US than the other grades anyway. So I don't really feel like going to great, great lengths to get those other paints. All right, so I have already done one row. I am going to do the rest in time-lapse so as not to bore you guys, because we've already covered kind of the important information that we need to know before going into this. Today for your swatching pleasure, we're going to be swatching on Canson's Fundamentals Bulk Watercolor Paper. And we're also going to be doing mass tone swatches here on the included swatch sheet. And I've got a couple of sheets of the fundamentals with me right now. This is just to sort of give me an idea of how these paints handle, how they perform. Usually when I'm testing high quality watercolors, I will swatch on high quality paper or higher quality paper than this, but this is just to sort of give us an idea. So they seem to activate very quickly. This could be due to a high glycerin content. And as promised, the colors are very vibrant. And it's a fairly good selection for mixing, especially for mixing kind of plein air. You have some ready-made 
colors, some convenience colors, and then you've got some colors that mix really well, especially considering they're single pigment watercolors. And this is particularly important if you're a watercolor artist who likes to do a lot of layers in your work. So if you paint like I paint with possibly too many layers, single pigment is a really good way to go because you're way less likely to get muddy mixes. Now, the cerulean blue is a little muddier than I'm used to. It is a single pigment though, could be the quality of the source. However, the ultramarine is really nice. Now I am a little disappointed that we didn't get kind of a cool toned blue, like a phthalo blue, just because I use phthalo blue often when I'm painting foliage. And I find that ultramarine doesn't quite fit the bill. Oh, I have some blue in that, so. Good to know though that you can quickly get a really nice olive green with a little bit of the, aha, I missed a green, that makes sense. With a little bit of the Viridian green, you can very quickly get an olive green. So one of the problems I have with field painting is I paint with impatient companions who are not always willing to give me the time I need to do field painting. And so um, sometimes my paints just don't activate quickly enough. Now I usually paint with a Kuratake travel set. So those are, um, they're not quite like Gensai Tombi paints, but they activate a lot quicker than most Western watercolors do. And sometimes even that's just not fast enough for them. So something I think is really nice about this white night set is just how quickly these colors activate. I didn't spritz them. I didn't do anything to kind of pre-activate them. They're just ready to go. So um, from top, from left to right, top to bottom, cadmium yellow medium, golden, cadmium red light, carmine, cerulean blue, ultramarine, emerald green, which a lot of us might think of as like a viridian green, just plain green right here. Then raw sienna, which is almost a yellow ochre. So if you're used to painting with a yellow ochre in your palette, this is a good sort of, uh, what's the word? Like you can replace it with it. Uh, burnt sienna, sepia, and then Payne's gray. So I'm going to let these dry and then check in with you guys. So this is still wet. I am gonna set this aside and we're gonna go ahead and start doing the swatch sheet since our paints are nice and activated, ready to go. And I'm using just a really cheap Princeton Snap today. And I'm doing these in mass tone. Now this is not a one-to-one -one swatch sheet, which makes me kind of curious how I'm gonna set this up because we have six across and then we have uh, two down, whereas this is uh, three and four. So you still have 12, but it's not a one-to-one. -one, and so it's kind of like, mm, how do I wanna set this up in a way that I can quickly visually read this? So if this were gonna become my daily driver and I were gonna be using this for say comic pages, because you definitely could with this selection of color, you just have to do more color mixing for your shadow colors. Um, I would redo the swatch sheet just so that I can more quickly reference the colors I need. And one of the reasons I've been doing so many of these unbox and swatch videos with mid-range watercolors is um, I've done a lot of really cheap watercolors for this channel. And um, I just kind of want to prove that you can get mid quality, nice quality watercolors without paying an arm and a leg. And I also kind of want to demonstrate the difference using decent quality watercolors in your art can make for you. I don't think you need to pay, you know, I don't think you need to break the bank if you're interested in watercolor, especially if you're an illustrator or a comic artist, you know, um, our work isn't exactly prioritized as fine art. So there's no not there isn't necessarily the pressure for something to last 100 to 200 to 300 years. The pressure is more, how well can we scan this? How well can we reproduce this? So I wanted to do kind of a mini series just to show other illustrators and comic artists that you, know, you can get nice watercolors at a very affordable price. They're gonna last you a long time. They're worth the investment. A set like this, now I 
literally watercolor every single day. Um, so I go through my nicer palettes fairly quickly because I paint so much. But these are whole pans, um, a lot of good colors for mixing, a lot of good basics. This will last most people who are just kind of experimenting and playing with watercolors at least a year to two years, maybe even longer. Um, if you don't mix really thickly, if you don't mix up big washes, if you just do little paintings and you paint sparingly, it can last you a really long time. And at just under $32, I think that's well worth the investment. A lot of people want more colors for their price point. That's not always a good thing. And um, you often can end up with subpar watercolor sets that in the long term are disappointing and frustrating to use. So it's really important for me to demonstrate some of these nicer sets. I can't afford the big ones, but I can't afford the small ones. Just to show you guys how flexible they can be, how useful they can be, and how you can really do a lot with very little. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna let our swatch sheet dry and then I'll check in with you guys. All right guys, these color swatches have had a chance to dry. So here are the mass tone swatches that are gonna go in the top of my little travel palette. Here are the gradient swatches, um, just to see if they still kind of hold up in vibrance as water is added. And then finally, I'm gonna do an opacity test. So I've made two lines on each side using a waterproof ink. And that is to test mass tone and then to pull it down into a gradient and see if that changes anything. And then I have the bottom line there, just in case I run out of room. There's 12 colors in the set, so hopefully I can get all 12 on, but that doesn't always happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that in time-lapse. So it looks like I was able to get all 12 colors on one line. I'm gonna give these a chance to dry and I'm also going to blend out some of these colors just a little bit more since I actually have the room. And it'll be really exciting to see how these watercolors perform in a field test because they sort of straddle the line for me. And um, I just really feel like their true colors, Budu Tish, are gonna shine or falter when we're actually doing the field test. So our St. Peter's watercolor, St. Petersburg watercolors have dried and there's a fair amount of opacity to all of the colors here. So I thought it would be really interesting to swatch these out on nicer paper. So I happen to have some Hmm, I don't wanna use the Kilimanjaro. I have some Canson Lockwell Heritage, Heritage or Heritage, right here. And I'll do a little bit of color mixing, color swatching, color messing around, just to see if that changes anything with the performance of these paints. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use a black pigment-based brush pen. I'm gonna throw some lines down on the paper so we can see whether or not these are truly opaque. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this paper, this is a 100% cotton rag watercolor paper and I am using the 140 pound version of it. I've got my St. Petersburg paints. I've got my clean water. So I'm really just gonna start slapping paint and water down on the paper and see what happens. And of course, this is no replacement for a field test. And 
and this set does not come with a purple, but the darker, cooler red and the ultramarine mix into a decent purple on the page. The lighter blue and the red, let's see what we get here. Mm, more of a muddy sort of purple. It's not terrible, but it is probably not anyone's first pick. The yellow plus the cerulean kind of makes for a, let's try mixing them, a little pre-mix here. Kind of like a sap green. That same yellow with the ultramarine. Kind of a muted green color. There's our emerald green. And there is our, it was just labeled as green, but it's kind of a, oh, grab the wrong one. It's kind of a sap green color. On this nicer cotton rag paper though, all the colors are a little more vibrant than they were on the very cheap student grade paper, which to anyone who enjoys using nicer watercolor papers, that isn't a huge surprise, but it is kind of refreshing to see that we're able to get a lot more vibrant colors with these, especially since this is a fairly affordable watercolor set that promises professional results. Those of you who have been watching my channel long enough know I'm always dubious of that. So it's nice to be able to put it to the test and see that the, the claims are fairly true. Trying to work my way through every color and find room for a little bit of wet into wet experimentation. All right, so of course you guys know we need to let this dry, but right now the colors are extremely vibrant, playful, colorful, full of life, even wet into wet. It doesn't lose its impact, which is something that some watercolors will do. They'll sort of lose their impact when they go wet into wet and get muted out. These are still very vibrant and distinct, and I really look forward to seeing how these colors hold up as they dry. All right, friends, this has had plenty of time to dry. The colors are still fairly vibrant. We're going to go in with a second layer, see if we get any sort of lifting, any sort of muddiness. So I think I will begin on the opposite side of the palette and do the same thing I did, still using a synthetic brush and loads of water. A little bit of lift up from the gray, I mean the green, which was heavily applied. Moving in now to sepia. And I'm really dragging and scraping the brush. Now on to burnt sienna. Still working really thickly. Next up is raw sienna. Then green. I'm still really dragging the brush, hoping to get lots of lift up and I'm not really seeing much lift up. Then emerald. Then ultramarine. Now cerulean. For the most part, the colors are going down really fresh and vibrant, although some of the layering, just by nature of how I'm layering, it's a little bit, a little bit muddy and desaturated, but I'm also trying to kind of layer colors that are uh, contrast colors over their contrast, just to see how those react to this sort of treatment. Now we've got Carmine. Then Cadmium Red Light. 
My green's lifting up, as you guys can see. That was another one that was kind of heavily applied originally. Golden. And then cadmium yellow medium. And we've definitely made a big mess with this. Colors are still fairly vibrant though. Um, there's a little bit of muddiness, but I also threw a lot of brown and gray on there. So I'm gonna let this dry and check in with you guys. All right, guys, so my test piece dried from last night. I was really sloppy with the colors, really laid on a lot of water, a lot of paint, a lot of layering, did a lot of scrubbing. This isn't as muddy as I expected it to be, and I'm not getting as much white blossoming as one would expect considering how opaque some of these colors are and how much paint I actually threw on the paper. So I'm excited to see how these watercolors perform in a field test. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this Unbox and Swatch video. I hope it was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys. And I really like the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolors. I think they are fairly high quality watercolors for the price. I like how much color you get in the pan. I think this could be a really good travel set for people who paint larger. A nice beginner set for people who want to dabble in watercolor and want to be able to do a lot with it, but aren't willing to commit a lot of money. And, um, just all in all, I think this set bodes quite well. We'll find out for sure in the field test. So keep an eye on this channel for that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. And I hope you guys have a great day. If you're looking for more watercolors, tips, tricks, and tutorials, check out my watercolor section here on this channel or over at natosoup.blogspot.com. Bye.